So moving into the autumn months, I generally pay quite a lot of attention to my rigs and rig mechanics. This particular rig here, I've tailored specifically to the venue that we're fishing here today, which is Thorny Weir. Thorny Weir runs a barbless hook rule. So I've done a few little tweaks to this rig to suit this venue. So I've chosen firstly a beak point hook pattern. That gives me half a chance of that hook point staying in position with uh, no barb on the actual hook itself. So that claw mechanism, that little talon-like tip, um, just tends to hold that hook in position once the rig, the rig has pricked the fish. And secondly to that, I've added a slightly longer and slightly more curved shrink shoe kicker than I normally would. Again, this aids the rig mechanics and the ability for once that rig has pricked the fish for it just to hold in position for that little bit longer, hopefully for that fish to move off and give you the bite that you've worked for. So those two little tweaks you can take into your own fishing or what have you, but um, you know, moving on to these sort of day ticket waters uh, you, where you've got to abide by a specific set of rules, thinking and tweaking your rig mechanics to, to suit those situations is something uh, you know definitely worth bearing in mind and it's something that I look at all the time. So thirdly, in my autumn fishing, I'm looking at refining everything down a little bit. The carp have been fished for, you know, since probably February, March, under quite a lot of pressure. And to, to that extent, they've pretty much seen it all by now. And a lot of them will have been put on the bank a number of times. So, you know, you've got to put everything in your own favour with regards to tricking these fish to picking your own rig up. Um, so baiting scenarios, uh, your baiting methods, the type of application that you use and the type of rig you use over the top of it all take a specific amount of thought and from my own experience, certainly in the last uh, decade or so, autumn's a tricky time of the year to, to get these carp to, to make mistakes. So putting everything in your favour with regards to finesse and baiting um, is obviously going to give you those few more chances before winter sets in. So first of all, my baiting scenarios will be uh, different to that of the summer. The, the mass baiting and larger items and a lot of boilies and what have you, that sort of starts to dwindle away as we reach the equinox. Once the water temperatures drop slightly and the, the light levels have changed, Generally speaking, I'll use slightly less bait, but it will be smaller items with added naturals. Maggots, casters, uh, the smaller particles uh, such as hemp and buckwheat will be added to the mix. And rather than lots of whole boilies, I'll grind up into powder, um, you know, a few kilos of, but you can do, let's say five kilos of boilies. If you're only gonna use a kilo of the crumb, uh, freeze the rest and use it for a, for, for a later date but that sort of makes up my the, the, the main part of my mix and to that I might add a few pellets as well but predominantly the maggots and the casters go in at this time of year so I'm looking at fishing smaller delicate hook bait presentations hence I generally tend to drop the size of my hook down maybe a gauge so instead of the big fours that I'm using in the summer months I'll drop down to a five or maybe even a six. And the hook link materials, again, you know, I'm using the, uh, the, the cam stiff hook link material here because I like the properties that, that offers. Um, but I've got the little break there, the little hinge uh, to allow a lot of free movement of the hook bait. And uh, rather than a 16 mil wafter, round boily, which I'll probably be using in the summer months, I'm dropping down to the little barrel wafters here so they're uh, you know they're a lot more uh, delicate and on top of that I'm just adding a small bunch of maggots you know only five or six um, flossing them down on top of that wafter so it just sits beautifully on the bottom in amongst my uh, uh, my baited pre you know baited area sort of thing you know I've found that rather than the big belt and braces hinge stiff rigs and and my, my general um, you know, uh, stiff D-rig presentation. 
Um, just, just making these small alterations can, can definitely make a difference as the fish slow down, the water cools, and you know, they're eating a lot more natural food. They don't need to, uh, you know, they don't need anglers bait at this time of year. There's a lot of natural food in the lake. So you've got to encourage those little feeding spells and um, you need to, I think, present something that not only would get, get you a, a quick bite, but actually stimulate the carp into uh, feeding over your spot and picking up that rig without caution. Um, so, you know, the maggots give it that, that they sort of mask that, that dumbbell shape, but the dumbbell shape is uh, trimmable and it's less sort of obvious than a round bait. Uh, and I've found with the, you know, crumbing up the boily and what have you, not giving them those big particles, um, I've found that you get a better reaction from the carp at this time of year. Right, so it's a pretty simple rig to tie. I'm going to tell you how to do it now. So take around about 14 inches, a 35 pound cam stiff hook link, using your stripper scissors, strip off around about five inches of the coat in exposing the inner core braid. You then form a loop out of that inner core braid, pass it through the eye of a size five curve point hook. To the end of that loop, thread on a, a small ring swivel, and then you pass the loop over the bend of the hook pulling it down to, to form a small soft D section. Then whipping six times up the hook with the soft braid, past the tag end back through the eye of the hook, creating your knotless knot. You then take around about an inch of shrink tube, pass it over the coated hook link and slide it up to the hook, passing it over the eye of the hook, just covering the knot itself which should leave you with around about a centimetre of exposed braid. I then slide two medium droppers onto my hook link. One will sit at the very end of the coated section where the soft braid's exposed, the other halfway down the hook link. I then simply measure the rig. I like to fish this rig at around about six inches in length and I'll tie a perfection loop knot in the end which will allow me to either attach it to a quick change swivel or a looped uh, swivel if I'm fishing it helicopter style. I'll then steam the whole rig, I'll drop the shrink tube section into a hot kettle, then remove it and then form a, a gradual curve in the shrink tube section to allow that sort of aggressive flip and turn style for the hooking section itself. And I then steam the, uh, the, the coated hook link straight, leaving you with a finished rig. All I then do is pass a length of floss through my hook ring swivel, nice and long, thread a dumbbell barrel wafter down, mount it onto the, the swivel itself so it's got plenty of movement, leaving the two long tag ends of floss exiting the, the top of the barrel. I'll then thread six or seven maggots onto a needle. They'll go onto one of the tag ends of that floss. I'll then bunch them down on top of the dumbbell wafter itself and then tie two or three granny knots over the top to it, it create a sort of Medusa's head. And that sits beautifully on the bottom, um, plenty of movement, nice and subtle, perfect rig for this time of year.